Welcome back. Nice to see you all again. And this time we have Batters and Tourist Week. Keep watching to find out what this is all about. This week I took part in seven contests, two of which were rated and five were unrated. So on the positive side, I am now ranked above tourist on Hacker Earth, and I surpassed the 2700 mark on Leadcard. On the negative side, I could not uh, solve all questions in either of the two COD vs Div 2 runs that I took part in, which I think is not great. And also I attempted doing two contests in a row, but eventually got a severe headache, which is also not good for team competitions, which are usually five hours long. So here you can see Hacker Earth's rated contests leaderboard. And you may be familiar with actually multiple people on that list, but interesting thing is that uh, Tourist, also known as Gennady Kortkevich, is ranked number 6. And eventually, after taking part in enough contests, I was able to surpass him, because Hacker Earth is nice like that. So, yeah. Uh, one more meme for you. <laughs> That's a child version of me, if you can't tell. Yeah, but enough of memes, and let's keep moving to the problems. Speaking of problems, there were 45 problems this week in contests. 41 of them, which is a lot more than previous week I saw in contest, partial that increases due to simple problems, you know, like there wasn't a single CFD one round. I upsold three more, so I only have one problem remaining from this week and it's not terribly difficult either, I just uh, running out of time to talk about this problem as well today. So the problems I had difficulties with involved graphs, and namely shortest paths and minimum span trees. And one more problem involved by finding binomial recurrences, which I should have gotten right, but I don't know, that it was in Ad Color Beginner Contest and I was partially running out of time and partially not uh, writing things down very carefully. So with that in mind, let's jump straight into a super fast practice session where I will actually explain all three problems to you. So first up, we have a combinatorics problem from Add Color Beginner Contest. Uh, in Contest, I figured out that you, we want to pre-compute factorials and inverse factorials given some modular, because that's a common thing to do if you want to calculate binomial coefficients in constant time, which is exactly what we needed here. So then I tried to do something else, like uh, move forward somehow, but was not able to think of inclusion-exclusion principle, which is definitely something I should remind myself more of, because I surely I know how it works, I just needed to think about it carefully. So you can see me working through the expressions, figuring out what is what, and eventually like Around line 50, I already arrive at something that is uh, possible to implement in quadratic time. I had a similar thing during the contest, but the thing I had was not optimizable. And this thing is optimizable if you notice a recurrent recurrence relation between the consecutive values of some sum, which is an often thing to do, like you often you don't need to invent something, you just need to speed up certain computation and that's what that's what you do. You find a way to, re to compute as little as possible from scratch and use what you already have as much as possible. So you will see me arriving at a solution essentially. Just in case I measure the time on add color, you can see me get accepted, and then I also clear certain things up 
using the fact that binomial coefficient is sometimes zero. And that is basically it. I'll clean up my submission and get accepted. Next up is a graph problem from Code Forces, Div2. <clears throat> uh, at first, it doesn't look like graph problem, it looks like grid problem. Uh, but somehow I still got the idea about graphs. During the contest, you could see my code from in contest. I had some like ID functions which translated the cells to vertices of a graph. But unfortunately, after that, I started thinking about minimum cuts because, well, essentially, the figure you see on the left is a cut, right? Uh, but unfortunately, it was just not the way to go. There was no nice way to formulate the problem in terms of cuts. Instead, it turned out to be a shortest pass problem uh, because you wanted to find a shortest pass from the center of the grid to the boundary and also account for the, par for the weight of the reflected part. Uh, but uh, essentially, after you realize that you are looking for a shortest pass from center to some point on the boundary, it's not particularly difficult. Like, you'll see me having certain issues with implementations, but ultimately I figure them out. I don't know, it's just like really the case of quickly debugging small things. And in the end, we'll, we'll get there. Like, it's just, just such a nice problem. Because I made the main mathematical observation about the path being symmetrical, and then it's just like, you notice the shortest path, and you're done with this problem. You can see me fixing last bits and getting accepted. So the last problem for today is problem H from the same ad color contest. And actually, during the contest, I even had not time to like even look at it. So yeah, it turns out to be a dynamic programming on a graph problem. And that's not really common because usually it's really hard to do to deal with graphs. So it turns out the main idea was to that you can operate on a tree. And which tree? Well, according to the problem statement, you could have made certain observations and concluded that you want to operate on a minimum spanning tree, which is a common concept in graph theory. Right? So once you notice it, it becomes a still a challenging problem to figure out the DP. The main idea is that you can merge groups, right? Uh, but you have to merge groups in certain order and grouped by weight of the edge over which you merge. And then merging is just the joint set union, very common technique to execute cross calls algorithm of finding MST. You sort the edges by weight and then you use DSU, this joint set union, to merge your edges. Uh, Except for in this case, after we found the MST, we want to do some DP on this tree, so we also need to merge DP values. And funnily enough, it was possible to do naively in this problem. Like, uh, oftentimes you want to merge somehow efficiently. Uh, for example, there is a well known smaller to larger heuristic that lets you do certain things in n log n time when you, because like uh, each dp value does not change its position very often and you can do some analysis on it so in this case it's another example of something that uh, actually works faster than it looks like and this is the case of like performed some case analysis on the sizes of components that you merge. You essentially notice that uh, there is a limited number of times when large components can get merged together because, well, you need to get this large component from somewhere. So essentially this works pretty fast. 
I encourage you trying this problem yourself and if you get stuck you can refer to editorial to basically see the same ideas with much more explanation. The last thing I wanted to remind you of is that we are going to have a live stream on January 23rd. In case you missed the announcement last week, here you go.